The Turtle Room. Education, conservation, survival. Okay, so this is a uh, an enclosure that I put together, very weird enclosure, for a pair of Sulawesi forest turtles, Leucocephalon yuanoi. Um, I've discovered, you know, um, these guys can't really get cold. Um, unlike other turtles that are semi-aquatic, um, they just can't seem to handle it. So I don't know what kind of outdoor time I'm going to be able to give them here. They just seem to be very sensitive to chilly nights. Um, seems though that they are liking this new enclosure because this pair has been breeding ever since I put them in it. So what I did was I took two 100 gallon Rubbermaid stock tanks. Um, on one side, I <clears throat> filled it all the way up with dirt, mulch, leaf litter. Uh, I mean, it's really deep. It's the entire thing almost. Uh, there's some live ferns in here. This is where the animals can take to their terrestrial habits and uh, where the female can lay her eggs. Um, and then in the middle here, I actually used a segment of an old bearded dragon rearing unit. Um, this actually can slide out. This is the frame here, which I put into two by fours. I framed the entire thing out so that the turtles cannot climb out because this species has dinosaur like limbs. There's a screen here. When you lift that up, this is just a rock sandy area kind of for the turtles to clean their feet off a little bit before they head back into the water over here. Um, river stone and, and all different kinds of rocks and stuff are, are found in their habitat in the Sulawesi Island, similar to uh, North American wood turtles. If you think of where North American wood turtles are found, just make a tropical version of that and you have Iwano habitat. Obviously temperatures are way different though. Um, so what I also did was here is I just made a couple screen two by four pieces here so that the screen stays in place. Um, on this side is another 100 gallon Rubbermaid. And what I did was I filled it three quarters of the way with different grades of gravel. Uh, there's coral in there and then a, the same river stone that's found in the foot cleaning area. Um, it's heated to make it about 76, 77 degrees, which is um, said to be their water temperature in nature. And it's filtered by a Rena, a Philstar Rena XPXL here, okay? Um, now what I did to protect the intake was I made like a four by four uh, basket. I don't know exactly how long that is. It's probably about 30 inches or so um, for the intake to drop all the way down into. And it's protected from any of the gravel that could get lodged and mess up the motor. And then I just stuck a fake fern in the top here to disguise it. The outtake is right here. It's keeping the water flowing slowly, which is something these turtles experience in nature. I used simple egg crate used for ceilings to make different ramps throughout the enclosure. As you can see, the turtles can effortlessly climb right out of the water. They're not the best swimmers. They freak out if water is too deep and they breed in the water. So you don't want the male drowning the female. And then uh, there's more egg crate over here to allow them to get uh, in and out of the land nesting area. I just, you know, reinforce that to the bins by drilling holes and using either zip ties or wire. Uh, there's some chicken wire or hardware cloth across the top here when the animals get to the ramp so that they cannot climb out. You've got a ZooMed 10.0 T5 right here and then a simple grow light right here for the plants. Right now, the building is at 72 degrees ambient temperature. I'm probably going to install a heat emitter over here for cooler nights. Um, the rest of the species in this barn can handle the drops no problem, even Egyptian and star tortoises. But for some reason, these guys seem to be very sensitive. So this big enclosure here is just for two turtles. Now, this is a very aggressive species. I've even been advised to not keep them together. However, this pair has proven to be very compatible since day one. They breed and then they split up. They don't fight. They don't fight for food. Um, so I'm hoping that they'll continue to be able to live in harmony. If not, we can always separate them. The other 
leucocephalon euanoid we have are being housed individually. But like I said, this pair right now has since day one, they've just really been doing well. So hopefully this girl will appreciate her new habitat and so will the male and we'll be getting more babies or we will get babies. We've gotten eggs that were fertile, unfortunately. We're still trying to figure out how to successfully hatch them. So there you have it. There's a, a quick, well, it, it wasn't quick to put together, but those are all the pieces. The filter is a Rena XPXL. I used various different sizes of woods to frame out the entire top to join these two 100 gallon Rubbermaids. That is just basically a simple Rubbermaid bin or tote that slides out of a bracket that I reinforced here. Filled it with sand and rock. Um, there's other ways you can join it. I just happen to have this stuff lying around. And again, this is just for one pair. We're gonna see how they do together because they've always been all right. They've been breeding ever since they went right in, so that's a good sign. And um, there you have it. Sulawesi forest turtle, leucocephalon, Iwanoi, indoor habitat. They've done well so far, but I wanted to give them something more elaborate with controlled temperatures, including controlled water temperatures. Lots more to report. Stay tuned. For more information on this and other exciting colonian species, visit theturtleroom.com.